Welcome back, Blood Bowl fans, to Season Finals. It's Day 2 here, spectacular Sunday. I mean, I've just made that up, but it sounds really great, so let's just roll with it. Uh, welcome back in. I'm Adam Savage alongside Jimmy Fantastic and Andy Davo, and we are we're knee-deep in it, fellas. We are in the trenches right now together, and we're about to welcome in our next lower bracket, Round 3. Bearing in mind now, for you folks watching at home, every game that you see here, the next two here, one person will get through to the next weekend to Grand Finals, the other will sadly leave the competition here. So, Jimmy, every every single game now matters massively. Um, and we've got a, a big one coming up here. But how I mean, how are you feeling thus far? I mean, we've seen some good, great stuff already, but how's uh, how's the day panned out for you? It's been great, hasn't it? You know, some interesting matches. There were, you know, like there's been, what, four games already? Four people have gone out completely. We're down to the top eight now, so it's all money, all in the money now, aren't they, these guys, even if they lose? And, uh, and then this, the winners will go through to next next week. Uh, yeah, super excited to see these games. And Andy, are you feeling the, I mean, you, you've obviously, I've got a massive credit to you as well, my friend, because you've been competing and casting at the same time, like, you're like someone who's who's bilingual, like seven different languages. <laughs> you just doing juggling, juggling every ball at once. Um, yeah. How are you feeling in yourself? Because obviously we talked about this. These these are long games. They can be arduous, tough. There's a lot of strategy. There's it mentally fatiguing. Um, how 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 are you feeling with everything that's yeah, that's been thrown your way in the last two days? So me, me personally, I'm I'm I was very tired on Saturday night after we cast another game. After all of the stuff, Jim and I then cast another one, which was a little bit crazy. But um, and we were both tired then. Today I'm all right. This is only we've only, only played one cast one. We've got two more to cast. It'll be fine. Um, but I wouldn't want to be playing more than two games a day for sure. Let me, let me ask you something a little bit a little random here, right? You, you, you're feeling the struggle. You're feeling the strain. You're getting a little bit down in the dumps. You need something to bring you back to life again. What's the one thing you're eating? What's the one thing that you, <laughs> you that is your go-to <laughs> snack, meal, food? You tell me. I want and you guys in the chat get involved as well. What what is what is your real rejuvenation? What's the uh, magic potion here? Andy, kick us off. <laughs> um, I, I very, very much like a little bit of spicy chicken. Um, spicy that's, that's, chicken? Yeah, Nando's is probably my, like, my thing. If I could <laughs> pick anything, just have a Nando's dropped off at my door, that'd be amazing. Thank you very much. <laughs> Oh, are you, are you, a, are you a, I'm a I'm a corn of the cob kind of guy. I like my corn of the cob. I like my, 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 my peri peri salt and my fries. Are you with me on the cobs? <laughs> no, the no, no, no. I, so I'm I'm um, I'm a double chicken burger twice with two sides, um, and cheese and pineapple kind of guy. That, that's me. I am vibing the pineapple. All <laughs> people say all the time this this they get they think I'm trolling when I say I like pineapple on pizza. I will I will sweep that up. I love that stuff. Um, Jimmy, what's your go-to snack? What's your, what's your what's your thing you have to eat? The only food. thing, the only thing that I eat is chicken, broccoli, and rice. <laughs> <laughs> says the herculean guy in the center of us here just just that he loves chicken rice bro I mean, broccoli is a, is a fabulous vegetable massive shout out to broccoli if you're watching uh it's a weird thing to say but um, i mean i mean it's, it's, a, it's a good thing to have uh let us know the chat as well what brings you back to life you're playing blood bowl all weekend long what do you need to bring you back to life uh let's uh, talk about um our, our players here and exactly what's coming our way our next matchup we should probably set that up for you guys as well here uh we have movement slayer versus inarion coming your way at home here this is going to be a a real one that's gonna i get to be a, quite a test i mean both players uh we, we've seen have made their way to the lower bracket here but andy um it's gonna be exciting to see here because as we know everything is on the line now and i mean for you as well personally i should ask you andy obviously you played Moomin Slayer earlier on today. It didn't work out in your favor. But in that respect, do you do you kind of go? Do you know what I want now? Now that Moomin Slayer is not me at the competition, I want I want them to go all the way and win this thing. Or do you kind of go? I'm bitter. I'm uh, feeling bitter. <laughs> well, well, it's, it's hard. I've actually played both of these teams. So I played Inarian uh, in the round two of the previous thing, and I won to get through. And then Inarian had to go and beat Olivia Zulak to get through to where we are now. And then obviously playing Moomin earlier today. I, I think Underworld as a faction are causing a lot of problems. Uh, they, they seem to be very strong. In fact, more stronger than I previously anticipated because of the overtime. So I, I'd like to see an Aryan win because Underworld can. Yeah, I was I was shocked we didn't see more Underworld. Honestly, we 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 saw I think only six Underworld in the qualifiers. Only two qualified. 
Art Shows Underworld, and then obviously Art's, Art's in the winner's bracket now, very happy. And uh, Moomin Slayer's coming through the loser's bracket, you know, may, maybe going to go all the way. Could be, it could actually be an Art versus Moomin Slayer final, couldn't it? All Underworld. Uh, they're super strong. I think the, the thing that people held people back from picking them was just inexperience with them. I, 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 was, I was confident I would get everything I could out of Dwarves. I wasn't confident I'd get everything out of Underworld. And, you know, the, the one guy who would has gone out. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Do you, I mean, we, we, we talked about the kind of the mirrored uh, lizard ma uh, men match we had yesterday. When it comes to Underworld being kind of, a, we, we, we talked a bunch about the kind of like the, a, a, a newer faction, that you know, was all learning the ins and outs. There's lots of different variety there. Would that make for a more exciting matchup? You know, uh, you know, comparatively, like a mirrored lizard men fight, a mirrored Underworld fight, would that be better to, better to watch, better to watch unfold? It, it would be interesting, yeah. I think it would be interesting. It, it, lots can happen with Underworld. It's interesting. <laughs> yeah, Andy pulled the right face. It's, <laughs> a lot can happen with Underworld. They're, you know, they're, they're, they're weird. They're, they're like the ultimate team, really. Anything can happen, you know? They, they can switch styles. They, 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 can get, they can get mass removed. They can mass remove themselves. It, just anything can happen in Underworld games. So it's, 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 they're, they're predictably unpredictable, I guess. Predictably unpredictable. <laughs> Great name for a band or a baby. Great name for a baby. For a baby. A baby. I was going to call him that. Uh, let's have a look actually at some of our players here as well here. Um, let's take a look at our first one, Anario, who's going to be the first player we're taking a, a, a look at here. Uh, Anario, we should say, um, you know, what what are you looking at with Anario on here? What's the what's the the genetic makeup of the team here, Andy? Walk us through. Um, so it's an, sorry, yeah, Anarian. Uh, that, the, the graphic there caught me out slightly. The, yeah, me too. The, 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 the four, the four <laughs> block and, and the block troll. He he's ultimately going to be trying to grab things and then just you know, kill them. Effectively, the tackle. If he can then start sticking it on the goblins, especially because they're dodging off on threes, that's where he's going to be deploying those guys. And then the sneaky git. If you can get the rat oak, if you can get the thrower, if you can get the you know, my word, if you can get the gutter runner, any of those. But I think he'll be trading that the goblin bruiser with sneaky git, which is the yellow little face, trading that all the time. It, this is an attrition matchup, and I, I think Anarian faces it quite well. The, the the flip side, they've just got to run away. It, I think you'll see a withdrawn defense, and I think you'll see a withdrawn offense from the, the underworld if they play it properly. Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, I think Underworld have got a really good matchup against Lizard Men, and Black Orcs are like really slow Lizard Men. But what they do have over Lizard Men is fourteen players. So wh while they're a bit slow, they've, they've got the fouling game and they've got they've got the bench to like yeah maybe go toe to toe with the Underworld. All right. Well, let's actually take a look at the uh, the Underworld team as well here in Moomin Slayer. Um, and again, we're looking to, we're looking to see. I mean, sixteen uh, yeah, squad members there as well, Andy. When it comes down to, to depth of squad, there sixteen. You know, there's four re rolls versus three here. I mean, these are these are these the big difference makers that could kind of dictate how how this thing ends. Yes, yeah, so Jimmy and I talked about it in the, in the last cast. We would we were talking about how offense you just expect to score on your own offense. And then ultimately, a lot of the time, you're playing for overtime. The the one thing that Moomin Slayer's probably got, really, which is a viable one turn, he's built the whole team around scoring that either turn 8 or turn 16 score with the Juggernaut on the Rat Ogre and the Gutter Room sidestep. So, so uh, Anarian has got to find a way to solve and stop that. And the best way to do that is kill all this, you know, the uh, players from position 8 down so we can't go and fill in random squares. We've yeah, seen it. Oh, go ahead, Jimmy. No, it's, okay. uh, he, he's protected his clan rats there. He's taken two wrestle and a block, so he's taken block on his throw. So he's really made it quite a fighty team, which which should help him in overtime compared to like Art built more for damage, Elliot built more for the one turn. So Moomin Slayer's got like a, a kind of evenly rounded. He's built a bit of bit of everything in there. Do you do you think? I mean, we talked about the the you know, passive versus aggressive, and when you know, when you get to this latter stage of the competition, when this is this is the last game now to qualify for grand finals next weekend. Um, you know, in your experience, both of you, what would you ask you first, Andy? Is it a case of being more, being more kind of aware, being kind of more, a bit more kind of cautious going into kind of a match like this because you're going to want to see what your kind of opposition's throwing at you first before you react, or do you want to dictate the play, grab the game by the scruff of the neck, and you and you make it yours from the get go? So I think the two different teams will have to apply that differently. The uh, the Blackhawks are going to have to play aggressively. If they play passively. The underworld will run around them and they'll just be a massacre. I, I think the most important thing for me 
going into this is to try and not get stressed out about the occasion. Just play like you would normally play. Because it's, it's remarkable how people, when they are under pressure, take too long, don't take enough time. Just do just stuff that they wouldn't have done on a random Tuesday. That's no... Got yeah, playoff nerves. <laughs> playoff nerves are a thing, aren't they? And that, and that's uh, that's that's a big part of the the pressure. You know, uh, it's it, this is a really big occasion, isn't it? The, the biggest the biggest tournament there's ever been, probably for blood ball. So yeah, really cool. I know you're absolutely right. I think you know the, pr the pressure can certainly make it make a difference. But I think our, our players here, you know, to, to I think to qualify for for grand finals next weekend is such a huge feat as well here. And you know, you guys at home, as we keep saying to you, let us know on like who do you think is going to go all the way here? Who will be Victor, will it be Moving Slayer or will it be Anarion? Let us know in the chat here. Uh, I'll continue throwing things out in the chat, I'm sure, as well as the guys, you know, like we talked about what we're going to be eating at some stage, I'm sure, uh, at the course of this uh, as well. But we're already actually to jump in very, very soon here to the match. I think it's almost ready to get into it. Let's have a look exactly how this one plays out here as Moving Slayer and Anarion in the lower bracket round number three go head to head for a place in grand finals chaps it's big it's massive huge here we go yeah so we're in um yeah so we've got moomin slayer receiving he did choose to receive and the fact that we see this snotling there means i think he is we are going to see the daka and the roger back here love yep. to see a daka <laughs> um, do, do you think, it, Jimmy, knowing that you were going to see the Dakar, I, he's put the tackle players back. Do you not think that actually you put the tackle, like, go go five along the line and put the two tackle players one forward of where they are now? Because you know the underworld are not going to fight you. Yeah, I mean, you you don't know that, but yeah, you, pro you probably, what you, yeah, if you, if you put the, the tacklers even one up like diagonally forward and then the blockers and have seven on the front line yeah th then that make that protects the tacklers as well doesn't it so yeah something like that M max tackle coverage yeah May maybe just put all seven because if they try to fight you the problem is then i guess maybe you get like somebody surf from the rat ogre if, if like they choose well, to fight you but yeah you've got to bank on if they fight you that's it good though isn't badly it? for them yeah but like, I, <laughs> yeah. I think actually just put the tackle players one forward of where they are now, and then the blockers diagonally up. Um, so you just got a line of seven across the line because yeah. there's no way they fight into that. Yeah. No way. And and this is terrible. That you, you need to be ca you'd be causing attrition. You know, movement four players stopping a one turn. This drive's already probably ruined. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, interesting. You maybe you should have thought about the DACA. If you don't know what a DACA is, uh, you know, it's withdrawn offences. We, we're seeing it in action here straight away. There's not much need to uh, to explain it. But yeah, it's like it's like kiting, right? Uh, a, a, a classic of video games in every format. And yet somehow it took Blood Bowl about 30 years to catch up to everybody else in the world. And now this is it. You just you just lead them around. They've got to follow you. And, and then you keep going back and then they keep following you and then you find a, a gap somewhere, shoot through it and now all of their players are alongside of the ball and, and you've turned them inside out and it's it's a really, really great, really great strategy discovered by, well not discovered, popularised by Matt Dacker. Every day I, I get somebody else saying, oh actually I've Dackered since 1995, you know, but uh, <laughs> I don't know how true that is, but he's at least popularised it, that's for sure. I'd like, I'd, I think, I think here where I, I've chose to stay on the halfway line a lot of the time and not go in for this. I like what he's done here, which is he has basically gone full forwards because you may as well. If, yes. if you stay on the halfway line, you're going to get one turn of contact and then he is going to run past you. Yeah. Funnily enough, talking to Art uh, last night, he said that, you, you know, well, we, we talked a little bit. Um, he said, he didn't like the way you defended it. It wasn't terrible, but uh, it also, you know, wasn't optimal. Like he, he thought staying on the half line was definitely not optimal way to defend the Dakar. Um And that was that was kind of my feeling, right? It wasn't it wasn't terrible. It wasn't a mistake, but it was a choice that he didn't agree with. And and I think I I think I think I agree. Like you you know you've got to try and push the pain here. You're not going to win if you don't remove anybody. And he's got 16 players, <laughs> so you've got to try and start removing them, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah, the art game, I think, was interesting because he's got the claw ogre, and I didn't want to go and trade hits. 
I Zaka, I, I maintain uh, structural integrity while I've still got 11 players. When I drop players, it doesn't work. Yeah. yeah it's, a, it's a struggle, isn't it? I mean, Underworld are a monster team at, at the end of the day. They're a monster, monster team. And it's not easy. You did have the guard biggins, though, didn't you, to help? That, that was a... That was something. There's no guard at all on this team here for a uh, for Moomin Slayers. So, well, for, uh, for Inarian defensively, there's no guard at all, is there? You just have the tacklers. You just have two tackle. It's imperative that he gets those tackle in the right place, isn't it? And he's done a great job of it so far. Uh, we saw in his match versus Crystal Hunter, didn't we? He, he kept getting the tackle in the right places. Yep. Yeah, this is this is good. He's forcing the fight on turn two. Yeah, yeah, that's what you've got to do. But, you know, by the same token, now all of a sudden, <laughs> yes, it's good that he's, he's forcing the fight, but uh, all of a sudden, <laughs> he's, he's not exactly, uh, he's not exactly uh, strong on the sides here, is he? <laughs> oh. Although this is quite a nice shape from, from him here. This is, this, is, this is a problem. The right ogre's out of commission and locked up and going to take a paint, um, pounding. Um, the only way to get around this is to go right, giving away a hit, maybe one dicing the the black orc on the on the far right hand side as we look at it. Yeah, uh, I don't think he has to get through this turn right, so I think he could just hit the uh, hit the troll with the rat ogre. Could he surf the troll? Maybe. <laughs> that would be something, wouldn't it? Impressive. Surfing the troll would be great. Um. I don't know how he hasn't got that many snotlings actually, has he? No. He's lost one, so he's only got one snotling left. But he maybe he could actually, right? Move move the snotling all the way around and then fill in these and then block him to there and then there and then block him and then I <laughs> block him this way and then surf him with a gutter. It was it was been possible. Hey, well, he's, he's got a gap. Just a reroll. There we go, yeah, that was interesting. Interesting that he's chosen to break through already. I think I think don't think he had to you know go for the break this early. It's only turn three. I I think maybe just honestly I think just hitting the troll was fine. Wouldn't wouldn't have to try to surf him. Could have just had like a wall of players, right? Three there and then an, another one there for the second hit. Yeah. Could just hit the hit the troll. Um or, or hit him down in a way, maybe. If, if, if that, that, that's what I, honestly, I didn't come up with this like an idiotic surf idea. I thought I want to put three players here and I want to hit him. But then I thought, well, wait a minute, I want to put him down. So if I hit him the second one, I'll get away, so I don't get hit by the by the black orcs. And then I thought, well, wait a minute, if I'm pushing him into here, <laughs> I might as well push him, with, you know, three more times and surf him. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, rescuing the roger would be at the. Forefront of my mind here, not just getting him not getting smashed by this troll. Yeah. He's gonna go rogue straight forward by the looks of it, I think. Mm. The reason Nisa is because of the coach Matt Backer, who was the guy who popularized it on Fumble. But yes, it, it's funny that it's completely inappropriate to be called a dacker in, in kind of law. It doesn't it doesn't play anything like what you'd expect that your dacker would conjure up, right? Which which I quite like as a little idiosyncrasy, if you like. There are no Fellas, guns. Can... Fellas, can I hop in? I'm gonna, I'm gonna hop in and ask you a question. Is that right? Absolutely. Fantastic. Let me let me let me ask you something, right? We talked we talked about um we talked about like you know war games, hero quests, these kind of things like in the last few days. Is there, is, there, is it kind of commonplace? This might be more kind of a tabletop related, I'm not too sure here. Is it commonplace though that you, you know, as you would in like hero quests, you have like a set way that the dungeon set up. Would you put yourselves in position sometimes where you would like simulate certain scenarios in game and kind of try and play your way out of them? Is it kind of common to do that at all? Like kind of say, right, let's say for instance, the Dakar, whatever it might be, where you put yourself in that position and you basically try and roll yourself out of it. So come the actual thing happening in reality, you've had an opportunity to kind of like try and test the formula of how to get past things. Do you ever do that kind of thing? That's actually a great question. Uh, the Artemis often talks about, oh, wow, about how he should do that sort of thing with one turns and never bothers. 
because yeah. <laughs> he thinks you know it would it would give the and look maybe he should have moved these two guys if they were if they weren't going to GFI should move those guys. Um, yeah, that's interesting. It's an interesting thing because I think one turns one turning is is probably the biggest skill that's replicatable. Um, right. It, I tell you, Rick Reckless, who used to stream Blood Bowl too, he he would always play a, a, a practice game before his playoff games with Elliot, and and you know he he said it helped. You know he got into situations like you you know what would it was more what would Elliot do rather than what his opponent would do. But he would get in situations where you know he's like, oh well, you know I I now realise that if he does this, this will happen. So I think with Andy and myself, we've played it enough that. We're confident that we, you know, we have seen everything before, pretty much that we can we can do apart from one turns. I think I think everybody would benefit from one turns, yeah. and probably nobody except Core, who is a uh, tabletop and Blood Bowl two and Fumble legend. Uh, he is like you know most pe- probably the most widely accepted best player in the world. Um, he's probably the only person who regularly does practice one turns, which is pretty funny, isn't it? Yeah, I, I felt I was. I was good at them in the last rule set, uh, and I've taught people how to do them. Whether or not I'd be completely comfortable doing them in this rule set, probably not. Equally, I don't play enough races that probably require it. But if you wanted to go and get another two or three percent win rate overall, absolutely, you should go and learn that. Yeah, hundred percent. The stuff like uh, you know, oh, wow. <laughs> so, so we saw the troll one in one in thirty-six and get knocked over and then the rat ogre one in nine and got knocked over uh, there's no route to the ball here but there's a there's a route to some pressure perhaps let's start with moving these guys that should have probably moved last turn maybe he was going to gfi them you know you, you don't know do you so he's, he's going to struggle to just walk and catch back up now isn't he there's there's a limit to the things you can practice i i guess setups are one thing where we, we you know we've got a we've got a bunch of setups that we're ready to use in any situation but uh Interesting thing. I I have considered it with like you know the coaching and stuff. Uh, you know mm-hmm. maybe there are things that you could set up to certain kind of situations. But it's it's it, again that's a problem. It's, the problem is like you know thinking of what it would be, and and how it's going to happen because the games are so fluid, and you know things can happen. But yeah, defending a Dakar is something you know you could definitely yeah. practice. You could well, just definitely practice that. Well, we saw we saw yesterday as well, Andy. You went down to um, eight men in the second half against um, Art, and it's like you know even that kind of scenario where you kind of you've got you've got lesser squad players left, and how you kind of get yourself out of those situations too. I, I, I just it just kind of like struck me that it could be kind of beneficial in a way. I, I, I don't know. Yeah, no. I, I, honestly, oh wait, did he? He got a board. Oh, it's his tackler. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. I was. Was it just? It was just brawler, wasn't it? Yeah, it was just brawler. Yeah, yeah, okay. It was, I thought it was a reroll. Um, yeah, that's interesting. Honestly, uh, that that is probably something that people people could do. I think you're right. You know, you've 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 cracked blood ball a bit here. This is probably what we're missing. That that you know that kind of esports attitude of yeah, just actually practicing situations rather than playing a bunch of games. You know, right. maybe if, if yeah. Well, I'll, look, give me a second. I'm going to dip out and quickly ring the patent office, get this patented, <laughs> uh, lock it down, and uh, very soon it will be rebranded as Savage Blood Bowl. You know, that's just, that's just, I mean, it's on brand. It works. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, it's not that hard, Hellboy, right? We could just do something like, you know, you, you have a team of 11 and you play somebody and you go, right, I'll put three players in the end zone and I won't use them. And I'll try, I'll try, I'll try to drive my eight players versus your 11. And, and just get the practice of it. I mean, how many people do that? Probably no hey, one's look. ever done that. <laughs> we'll, we'll call it ad, we'll call it advanced blood bowl. They did it with Hero Quest. We did the same thing. <laughs> yes, yes, advanced blood bowl. <laughs> That's the one. Oh my god, you're a genius. <laughs> Can't believe it. We've, we've just we've just solved one of the biggest world problems. We've just we've just solved it. We've done it. Live. <laughs> It's genuinely, it's genuinely a great idea, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to everyone in the chat right now. Going taxi for Savage, Uber, <laughs> <laughs> Uber Blood Bowl. That's the one. Uber, oh, that's the one. <laughs> that is the one. Uber, oh, we've just. This is this is this is this is this is magic. This is actual like audio. This is magic right now. Oh my goodness. It really wow. is. Gosh. It really is. <laughs> oh, there's a cars. Yeah, I guess the, the 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 problem with this, honestly, is just getting getting people to practice it with you. Like you know, having the desire to do it and then getting somebody to do it with you. 
Um, but I, I, you know, that's a stumbling block because you know it's it's something people play in their free time for fun. But uh, yeah, I think that I think that's a great idea. I think you know it could be a good content idea and everything. Yeah, I think that's a honestly you've just broke blood ball there, uber blood ball. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome, everybody. You're welcome. Mic drop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. That's it. But, um, yeah, no, it just really struck me. I thought it was really cool because we've just been talking about the kind of like the, the the board game aspects the last few days and kind of obviously, you know, the 80s, 90s. And it just it just felt like it was a thing that would be really kind of cool to to be like a, a, a blood what was, what was the name of the kind of the wizard in Hero Quest? Was it kind of Ga- Z- Zargon? That was his name. Zargon. He's the guy that kind of set everything up. It was very cool. Okay. Yeah, no, nice. it's a good idea. It's yeah. a really good idea. What I, what I have seen is like people have, you know, like gone like solve this touchdown, you know, and then like, you know, assume all your block dice are pushes. Uh, what hits do you make and stuff? And these kind of, you know, like, a bit like chess pu- puzzles, but for Blood Bowl. I've seen a few of those that people have done. Mm-hmm. And it never really, I never really struck me as something that could be useful. <laughs> do you know what I mean? But yeah, I quite yeah. like this idea. I quite like this idea, honestly, genuinely, because defending against a Dakar is a real problem. You know, there's, there's, first of all, there's not many people as good as these guys, right? These 16 in this competition. There's not that many people as good as these guys. They may be like top 30 or so, right? Um, off a mark, you know, top 56. Maybe it's top 50. Who knows how many, how many, uh, how many guys are about this level off a mark? So you, there's not that many that you can even like play, you know, at them using the DACA effectively, if you see what I mean. So there's there's a limited pool of people to practice against. And then, you know, you very rarely see, for example, Andy trying a DACA. So so defending a DACA is something people really do have holes in their game in, for sure. Wow, really, really, really interesting. I'm loving this. That was that was great. <laughs> This drive, it's not over, but uh, Inarian's really having to GFI and pedal back here. I I, um, I did some coaching sessions with someone, I don't know if they want me to name, so I, yeah, a someone, and one of the things that we did was we actually took a repeatable situation, which was setups, and played the first four turns over and over again, a bunch of times, just to see how different setups would impact the way that the drive would play out and it's actually a more efficient use of time than playing a full game end end because by the time you get to turn six or seven that drive's probably done so you're more efficient to play three or four turns three or four times than it is one game all the way through ah oh, nice that makes a lot of sense a lot of sense well i i <laughs> i i agree and disagree a little bit i i did a similar kind of thing with my setups guide uh had like you know playing a couple of turns on offense to see how to like you know try and two turn against these defenses but I feel like as as long as the it starts okay, the crunch turns are there's turn seven and eight, right? That you know turn six you've got to get into you know turn six and seven, particularly turn seven you have to get into range. And I find that versus less experienced coaches, that it's it's those like crucial turns is when their defense breaks down or when their attack breaks down. So that that's an interesting little spin on it. But yeah, I mean, you want to you want a bit of play. I don't think you just want to say like this is a setup. And, and you know it'll be good. People have to have an idea then what to do to you know to to, to use the defense and how or, or, or attack and then how to how to attack against it and stuff. So I think there's a lot of value in in playing a few turns out to get a feel for defenses. But uh, finishing drives is also super important. Yeah, I, I think they're they're both very relevant. The game that um, someone's referenced me that messaged me on Discord and said yeah, this particular game, the way that we created and crafted the the setup actually completely defined the whole drive and that then meant that he then went on and then built the medium the middle bit and the end bit and it was all fine so i guess it's both sides isn't it if you've got a bad start you're screwed if you've got Mm. um if you have if you you can get a good start then you can always go and then build on that so i think they're they're both really important but it the setup you can you can replicate setups very quickly yeah. can't re- replicate what would you do in this random turn six well how did i get there so exactly yeah so it's a options. problem yeah it's a problem to, to it's a problem to do those kind of things but what you could do is yeah defend against a daca uh do a whole drive players down from the start yep. mm. and those are things you could do kind of kind of cool kind of cool though if you introduce this kind of like scenario kind of set up into like the you know the digital like <gasps> kind of game version oh my unlock. god oh wow okay don't know why he did that because he, he, he was 
Oh, it was to not get tagged at all, but it was two two plus to save a two plus. And he spent his reroll now. Yeah. Okay, he was going to go for it twice, so he couldn't be touched by the by hole. the. Uh, this is a foul with tackle. He's going to foul him. He only has to break. Of course, he's going to foul him. Yeah. Wow, I do not think he should have GFI'd. I, I guess he could have got one dice, couldn't he? He could have got one dice by the snotling, but. I, I, I guess getting one dice, yeah, you've got to make them. I don't know if you do foul here, right? Because you can blitz with the other tackle in the halfway line, run over and mark the line rat, and then you're going to pick the ball up, and it's now two dice uphill, and he has to roll a pal. <laughs> uh, one dice. It'd be one dice. Oh, it's it? oh. No, it's a goblin. It's a snotling. Goblin bruise alignment. That's a goblin, yeah. yeah Why was I saying it's a snotling? No. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just really stupid. Man, um, my, my mind has been blown. I'm sorry. Savage Blood Ball has taken over my mind and I can't concentrate <laughs> on the game anymore. I was, I was just saying, we say, I was saying in the game, you could have like certain scenarios. If you kind of play them out, you manage to win them. Then you kind of get, make, unlock XP, kind of like some a skin of some sort. I think it'd be kind of cool to introduce that kind of thing. Yeah, they, they had um, they had scenarios in Blood Bowl 2 they were yeah. like, where they were like simple things where you know you always roll a push and so you find like the the kind of safe way to do something but uh there's honestly a lot to be said for yeah just attacking with less players and just getting more a lot more comfortable with being down because you know you, you will be down players in matches anyway and you know you'll have to defend two turn scores and you'll have to defend against dackers and stuff but specifically defending against against dackers and executing dackers is a, is a great practice thing and uh, he's just he's just going to surf him here, right? He's just going to dodge and surf. So um, depends where the ball goes. He might be able to get it to him. But he's not got not got a reroll, and he skulls out. Wow, wow! Inarian, what a legend! What a legend Inarian is. Can he score? Yeah, he's got a goblin here. Black horse can throw, can't they? Yep. Uh, can they throw in far enough? No, no, he can't score. He can't score because you can only throw it viably to the guy on the halfway line. If the guy on the halfway line can't then do anything. One, two, three, four, five. He can, he can long bomb it. He can long bomb it, but uh, something happened. <laughs> he could have long bombed it. He could have long bombed it, that guy, I'm pretty sure. He probably just took the opportunity to foul the gutter. Yeah, probably. he probably did, yeah. <laughs> yep. Which is fair enough. It was pretty unlikely, you know. Not too unlikely, though, right? Thirty percent to make the to make the uh, to make the cast to make the cast to make the pass. It would have been thirty percent with a reroll. I think I think you should have gone for the pass, you know. Yeah, I'd gone for the pass because you one nil up. That, that's huge. That doesn't matter then if you as long as you convert your score, you're probably fine. Yeah. Right. This is looking very heavy in Arian now, isn't it? I think. Yeah. Yeah, he's pretty favoured. Um, so what's this? Two Snotlings are on the field, so he could have 13 players. And uh, still 11 for Inarian. He does have 13 players. So he's not that favoured <laughs> in Arian, is he? He's not that favoured right now, but he is going to get to make these blocks with block. And, uh, he needs to take the rat ogre out. That's that's the key here. Get the rat ogre on the floor. Get rid of it. Yep. <clears throat> oh, I've, I've I've like predicted against an Arian every single round except Galentio. <laughs> no offense, Galentio, but. Uh, he, you know, like, he's just kept doing it. He's just kept winning in Ari, and it's amazing. Yo, pals. We take the both down? Both down, yeah. Keep it in contact. Well. Didn't matter. <laughs> I, I, if there's a hole in an Arian's game, it's not making the remaining moves like that are just safe like go close up the back end of that cage with two of the goblins because you know you're going to you can do that now yeah he might be gonna foul maybe right 
But yeah, it looks like, whoa, what happened there? <laughs> um, <laughs> That's me in the crowd, back there. Okay. Oh, he's going. Oh. He didn't re-roll into that, did he? No. Uh, okay, let's. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> what's happening here. Okay, um. It's, uh, I think I'm being fought. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Now, for those of you watching at home, uh, what's going on? We've, we're watching the cast through a virtual machine, effectively, and Jimmy is currently controlling the machine. And there is also a number of other people who've potentially got access to it. I've deliberately stayed away from such um, technological wizardry because I will break it. Yeah, oh. I don't know what's happening. It's just going up the top every time. Are you having to hold it back? Yeah, yeah, I'm having to pull it back, and it's. Oh, I got kicked. No, I'm, I'm still here. It's just, it's just going up all the time. Yeah, it's. Oh, I do not like that exposing one of my better players for a random removal. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is a little bit uh, of a problem. It keeps going at the top of the screen. <laughs> It'll be someone who's knocked the mouse in front, and it's now scrolled up. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe somebody in France has knocked the mouse. Okay, I think it's it's. Maybe if I don't use the mouse and I use the WASDA, let's uh, let's try with this. Oh, okay. Uh. This is definitely <laughs> not me moving it. <laughs> um. Oh, big hit! Roger has just killed a black orc. Dorian, no apothecary, so that's just dead. It was one of the block ones, I think. Mm. Yep. Um, <clears throat> what we're doing now is chat, just making sure that all of you feel like you're also included in the game. <laughs> right. Uh, I think. Uh... Oh. You're not back in control. No. <laughs> I can see the cursor being fought. <laughs> Oh, oh God, oh God, oh God. Um. <laughs> okay. Oh, is that you? It's okay, I think, is the, str the stream's okay, isn't it? The stream's yeah. okay, we're just seeing the movie. It's, uh, everything's okay. Yeah, everything's just... okay. I had blind panic for a second there. Oh, Ooh, no, can you got... hear this? Yeah, that's, that's awful. Is that on the stream? Oh dear. Oh no. Oh no. It's just me starting the car, lads. Give me one second. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's weird, because I, I tabbed out. And... Is this... <laughs> I don't know what's I don't know what's happening. <laughs> oh dear. Okay, thanks. All right, it comes back to us for a second here as we have a quick uh, technical fix of things there to make sure everything is uh, ready to rock and roll again in just a moment's time there. But um, yeah, <laughs> well done, you. Joe. I think I could I could just feel the sense of panic there, Jimmy. Going, what? Well, I think everything everything feels like it's working, but it's not working. I don't know what's going on. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, everything kept going at the top of the screen. Uh, I don't know. Okay, okay, are we back? Are we back? Well, I think at the same time, let's not forget here as well. This is this is this is a, a brand new, you know, kind of opportunity here for Blood Bowl three for Nacon and Sun and everyone to kind of put something like this on. So we're uh, we're rolling with the punches and we're learning as we go. And you guys have been amazing and, and so welcoming because of this as well, which is fantastic. So any second, I hope we'll go back into the game. Is it back there, Jimmy? Uh, not yet. No, I, I guess they'll they'll message me when it's okay to touch anything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. I'm not tabbing back in to touch anything uh, here. Oh, okay, we've got a message. Sorry, bear with me. Uh, no problem at all. Uh, Andy, talk us through. I mean, obviously, we're seeing uh, this head-to-head -head here, and we know that whatever happens at the end of this, one of these players will go through. One will get knocked out of the competition here. Um, as tentative as you thought it could be, as aggressive as you thought it might be, how has the land lie thus far? Yes, I thought Anorian actually played that about right, where you just chased it down. 
Um, Moomin kind of gifted him the, the, the not having to score back the res reverse touchdown. But I, I like what Narian's doing. He's trying to chase the Rat Ogre. He's trying to punch it with Mighty Blow with the Troll. It's cost him a Black Orc, but I don't think he cares. He'll just keep going and going and going. If he gets that, he'll win the game. So I think Narian's doing the right thing here. Yeah, I'm, I'm okay, okay now. We're, we're, we're fine. Okay, we're going back into the mix here. Let's jump back into the action. Thanks for bearing with us, folks. Here we go. It is currently turn number 10. Phew. Oh. Oh. God, God knows what happened there. Oh, the ball oh has been God. sacked. The ball has been sacked. Wow. Wow, um, this is... He's got 2D. Oh, no. Scatter. What's happened? 50% scatter here is terrible. It's going again. We don't want to watch this scatter. This scatter, we cannot look. This scatter is that stressful. Okay. I'm not going to touch anything. <laughs> wow. Yeah, right. so I don't know how he lost. Well, I mean, you do know how he lost it. Look, like, Blackhawks are not a good team. <laughs> okay, and... Uh... You know, I guess a goblin, a chain push. The the rattle goes right in the mix there. We could have had a, a goblin dodge in to fill, a, a snotling dodge in to fill, get some kind of chain push going there. And now the gut is there to react. Gets the pick up. And, Left uh, it open though. I so one of the things I saw Elliot do uh, on a replay when I was watching some of the stuff, the yeah, orcs versus underworld was. There was a scenario like this. Eliod got the ball, and instead of charging forward, he actually ran and then ran back behind his screen. And it was on turn like 14 or something, and he thought, oh, that's, that's bonkers. But actually, because he valued the gutter runner and the safety of the gutter above everything else, because the damn thing can move 11 squares in a turn, it made a lot of sense. Yeah. And and here, he's, he's left what is probably going to be a three-dice block on. You'd be expecting to get one extra assist on for the... Uh, the black orc to throw yes and there's no block on the on the gutter runner so this is a uh, pretty good odds isn't it with three dice yep. two good results 70 percent not the big one. oh and the stupid here has now meant that the goblins are gonna dodge in fact you've just knocked yourself down from three dice to two dice i think I don't think you can dodge here, can you? I think you've knocked yourself well. Or, or you've got a one deed again free. You shouldn't have blocked with the troll, right? You should have just blocked with the uh, goblin. And then that's almost... Yeah, so he does the dodge. Yeah, okay. Okay, Okay, that's fair. He just makes a dodge. You need three dice. 100%. The third dice knocks him down. down. Injured! <gasps> oh, does he have an apple? He does. The apple comes in, works, but if he's 1-0 down, the uh, apple doesn't matter at all, does it? So this is huge now. If he can, if Inaran can get this dodge and pick up, he's yeah. in with half a chance, isn't he? Tagged the tackler there. There is a wrestler here, though, and, uh, you know, snarling that can, that can stop both assists. So... Yeah. It's going to be chasing the underworld, chasing everything around. <laughs> I'm not sure you can go and stand on the sideline here because the the snotling can go and stand behind the ball carrier, uh, and then you go and fill in squares and you just surf the ball. I think Narian's made the right choice, just staying put and hoping he doesn't get powered. Yeah. Oh yeah, I I made the mistake of uh, sideline caging against Mr. Page in uh, in the play-ins and. Oof, that was that nearly ended really, really badly. <laughs> I got a bit lucky. To, I just, I just forgot that you know, that this underworld team, the ridiculous, you know, damage machine and one turning machine, actually just has loads of stunties and can quite easily surf things. <laughs> yep. The gut ribbing off here though does make things very challenging for him to score. Mm. Yeah, dodge in there with a snot, and I like that. You come in from behind, or are you going to come in from in front? Oh, in front. Doesn't get him, though. Doesn't put in a reroll. Only two left. Interesting. Sure, 
It is interesting, isn't it? Because you can try and uh, get this to nil-nil, but um, you know, and then and then over time you've got your got to run it back. But maybe your best bet is to put in the rerolls and and you know win one nil. Not sure. Not sure what the best way is. I'd love to think about surfing something here, but that's just wrong. You get the ball back towards the troll, I think. Because that's where you've got a chunk of your team. Surfing should yeah. never be wrong, but in this instance it is. <clears throat> you have to activate the troll. I thought that would be an occasion where you actually would have activated the troll. If you stun the goblin up, you get three dice with the troll. And you've not lost anything. In fact, you've possibly gained a black orc. Yeah. Oh, it's gone stupid again. No, it hasn't. It still hasn't activated. <laughs> Where's he point? Where do you think he's winning the ball? I've got no idea. It's an Aryan. And anything <laughs> could happen. Three dice blitz. Okay. It's the bang. I think he's going to stun the ball where the troll, uh, mark, behind the troll, um, on the diagonal. He'll make a bot. Oh, no, he won't. No. Nope, he's just no. going for this cage here. Well, no, because he's blocked the... You'd have thought he'd have pushed him down, wouldn't you? Uh, pushed yeah. him into this square yeah, and yeah. he could have and then run. come through into yeah. the cage. That's where I was going. That that broad area there. The nuance yeah. is, you know, everyone can choose their own thing, but that's where I'm going. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, here, here. Not, don't follow. Push him there. I push him up. Ah, uh, so yeah, this is the problem. If you no, you push him there. You could have pushed him down, not followed, and then he could have gone totally diagonal. Yeah, that was that had to be the play. That had to be the play. Go for it into this. Hello. I guess he's just going to dodge. Dodge, uh, dodge, uh, oh, oh God, cast. <laughs> okay, I've Joy. been that, I've been that bamboozled by, uh, <laughs> by whatever's happening with it. <laughs> but um, actually, this is, I'm be, I'm, I'm just as bamboozled by an Aryan. <laughs> that was, that was weird, wasn't it? He, uh, maybe this is better. Like he's got the screen. He's got a, he's got a screen over, over this side, hasn't he? And then a uh, screen here, so I, you know maybe didn't need the cage. I don't hate it, but he equally an Aryan has only got four turns to score, and the, his cage corners are only movement four. If you walk yeah. that forward, that is basically four turn. It's it's forward, 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 which is just not realistic. No, so I would it, rather have been further forward. Yeah, yeah, exactly. If if the goblin's here and the, he's got cage corners in front of him, and the, and that's much better, isn't it? Like. This black hole could have been three squares forward. This goblin could have been four squares forward, and then you're just in a in a much better spot. Yep. And this could be a fine margin. I, I my second playoff game went horribly wrong, or very nearly horribly wrong, because I I played too passively for too long, and it was the same problem. I just I, I just didn't go forward when I should have done. Yep. Yeah, it's one of the big things you gotta you've got to get that. It's less important actually now in the current rules. And then you can spend all of your rerolls to to oh wow he's going for the one D. Doesn't he roll? Wow. Wow, this is It's like he's doing the crazy shots on the ball, but then not re-rolling them when he gets them, isn't he? Which is a bit uh a bit weird. You'd th you would think you would, you know, if that's what you were trying to do, you'd be re-rolling the his, but I guess that he's just looking at it as a free roll and and you know, if he gets it, he gets it, and if he doesn't, then um, he'll uh, he'll score the one turn. What? Save his reels for the one turn now, maybe. One turn shouldn't be super easy, though, right? Against strength four, even with a juggernaut roger. Yeah. Where is he going to put this? Or as far forward as he can, which isn't too far forward if he wants to protect it. I mean, he's still got three turns after this, but. You can maybe try like a GFI with a black orc over there. Yeah, I think one GFI with a black orc. 
No. He's just assuming that strength four beats strength three and he's fine. This is okay. Yeah. Two dice uphill suddenly makes this all look very, very bad. Yeah. Maybe move this guy out in front. Yeah. And then yeah. replace him with that goblin. Yeah. Yeah. Because you know you've got to put... You've got... You know, there is no choice. You have to push forward next turn. Yeah. Oh. Or you put him over there, yeah, for the one, ugh, one dirty one D. There, there is payoff for this one D, to be fair, but I don't like just moving him away when you could have been moving forward. But you know, it's hard to say, isn't it? There is the emphasis on going forward, but Anarin's still got three re rolls, and I guess he's thinking, you know, you can spend them all to, to, you know, to do things on the critical turn. That, that is the thing that happens a lot, I think, in this rule set is that, you know, Blood Bowl two, you constantly have to be advancing with basically every team, and then now what we see is with three re rolls, you know, all being able to spend on the breakthrough turn, plus, you know, in progression. Every single ball carrier can get plus two movement, so so you end up with a lot more like you know passive defense being a lot worse these days because people will spend all of their rerolls to break through on a key turn, and you know that that translates to NAF as well, doesn't it? I've I've uh, yeah, it does I've yeah. people yeah people t talking about this. I haven't experienced NAF myself. Well, the, you know this uh, this Blood Bowl three tournament, uh, but outside of that, you know, not hugely experienced in actually playing NAF style. Uh, but you know, it's it's essentially this. You know, it's still Blood Bowl, isn't it? And and that strategy is still going to work, especially with Underworld, with the one turn and everything. So yeah, it it still it, it still works. I think you you see. I talk to people about tech playing tabletop. You absolutely want to save. Oh Jesus! Save all the three rerolls for turns you know six onwards. So play play passively if you can. Um, and save your rerolls. Critical. Well. The troll doesn't have to worry about mocking anything. No. <laughs> this is a nice little scoot up the side now, isn't it? Everything's dead. <laughs> Everything's dead. It doesn't look like Anarin has to worry much about protecting the ball as he gets forward now because everything's lying <laughs> on the ground, right? Three players on the ground, three players standing. Nice. And you know, obviously, this is going to be on the ground. I didn't, I didn't count that as the three players standing, really. But there you go. Uh, so now there's four players on the ground and three standing. And yeah, this little scoot up the sideline. Still doesn't even have to overstretch either, does he? He doesn't have to, doesn't have to do anything crazy this turn. It's looking very hard to stop. It's going to be a foul as well. There's absolutely a foul on the on the uh, Roger here. Yeah, two assist foul. He could just bring the sneaky get up. He could. He could just keep keep safe. But yeah, I think you're right. I don't think he wants to keep safe. He wants to. He wants to win this, doesn't he? Uh, even if it goes to overtime. No. <gasps> I'm fouled. Like, the the right ogre is is he's still going to have a one turn, and the yes. gutter runner is guaranteed to be available. There is no kickoff event. No nothing. So <laughs> you've got to kill the right ogre. Well, I mean, there is a kickoff event. He could get a, he could get oh. sent off, couldn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I remember somebody uh, got their thrower sent off didn't they, in this tournament. <laughs> Don't know if it's too soon or not. Uh, but... <laughs> not bitter. But I should have yeah. won that game. Um, yeah, officious ref, isn't it? Officious ref and pitch yeah. invasion. Um, are, the, are the two really the only two that can mess with it? Um, so yeah, it, it very. Yeah, it was, there was a lot of value in fouling that rat ogre. But then, you know, you've still got to score your, on your own drive you, first, haven't you? So. I guess he just thought protecting, you know, having that goblin up with him. If he doesn't have that goblin up there, then it's it's one less player that can protect him next turn as well, isn't it? So, yeah, and it's movement six. I I I can I can understand it. I just think I I've personally valuing that right ogre so unbelievably heavily that I would like to see it get killed. Yeah, I, I mean, on balance commentary, I'd like to see it potentially get killed for one of the coaches and then not killed for the other. Yes, <laughs> if 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 you were in Aria, you would definitely want that killed. Yes, that, that's completely reasonable. Um, One player's yeah, locked up. Two players here. Yeah, it's not bad, is it? There was no way to hit it from any other. Pl I guess he could have moved the. He could have moved this uh, this black orc here. He could have moved first, and then he could have hit and moved it. Like away, couldn't he? So he actually could have done. I think. I think he could have just cleared it with one hit if he'd done the blitz first. Is that correct? I think so. I think so. I'd like to see him move the troll like 
ASAP because then you know whether or not you've you've got him. Oh, yeah. Well, he he wanted to like move him. He wanted to move him like around the snotling, didn't he? I'm, I'm pretty sure. I mean, yeah, maybe not, maybe there. diagonally. But I think he wanted to make this blitz first. I think that's it's quite reasonable to attempt the blitz first. But now we've got to make a three point cage. It's asking a lot, isn't it? And you didn't break armor on the other one. Maybe he's going to need to run over and foul it. He does like a foul in Arian, doesn't he? Yep. This has gone from being completely fine to being very not fine. It's so weird. Yeah, there were so few players. Like, there's still so few players. There's a Snotling and, and like, a, a Skaven Thrower. And he's got five players, six players, and suddenly he's got five players and it, you know, he's used players and it's it's really difficult I just don't understand how it's happened that's because they're movement four <laughs> i yeah, think oh, is yeah, the problem that's right. Oh. that's right they're not lizard men are they <laughs> oh no he's oh, fell wow. another one. Oh wow puts tackle on him fair enough and he is going for the foul yeah if you, an av break you should be fine just get the av break you are actually fine it's just about it's just about good enough, isn't it? You can't realistically three dice uphill um, to take away that, <laughs> and he hasn't got people free. That do. I guess he can free these two up here with a rattle gun. Yep, he does. So he does have two players free. Maybe he could uphill. Maybe the the tackler could come down to assist. He could uphill the tackler, and then he's just got a free free way in. Oh, he stood him up already. Oh no! He, oh, oh God! It was, he's the rogue. He's got the rogue. Oh dear! Rogue. You thought the rogue would have blocked, wouldn't you? I think I think he's going to blitz Roger into the sneaky git. Try and put tail on it. Oh yeah, and put tail. Hmm. I think that's what he's going to do. Oh yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm sure it is. But I think that's a bit again a bit too passive. I, I think I like trying to uphill uphill the tackler and then go for the wrestle sack. I think was. It's the play. Just a push. Just a... Oh, he gets the power. He gets the power on the third dice. Great. This is a problem. And now he needs something to come back. I don't think he's got anything else that can... Oh, I guess he can tag. Yeah, he's just going to tag, tag this guy now. with a snotling. And tag that guy with a snotling and then dodge out the wrestler. Suddenly, an Arian's left with one dice grabbing the Rat Ogre out of the way and then having to dodge on a three. Mm. Unless the troll behaves itself. Well, I just, yeah, so get the. Oh! You've got to keep the reroll for the one turn, haven't you? Yeah, he does, but. Yep, so we've got uh just stand up that goblin and one dice and he can he can if he can get the troll he can make it a two dice, can't he? Yeah. And then he could then he wants to blitz the snotling as well to clear the snotling with sidestep, so chaining his goblin back isn't such a great idea as well, is it? So looks like he's made up his mind, that's why he's starting with the three dice. Maybe he hasn't. Maybe he hasn't minded. Maybe he doesn't know anything. That's why I started with the block <laughs> <laughs> to give himself some thinking time. I'll just punch something, even though I've only got one reroll. So that, that's a two plus to make it two dice. Yeah, yeah and he can two. actually assist from the from the backside, right? He can come in here, so that there is a chain. So if he gets a push, he could uh, he could you know push him to here, and then maybe he could blitz him out. Something like that. Or grab him away. I can just grab him away, can't you? Yeah, he? just grab him away. I I think maybe this is worth grabbing him away on a one dice. No, uh -oh. so he's, he's oh, bringing no. him in for the two, yeah. Now, now he hasn't got the grab square, has he? So now he's got the chain, but he gets the pal. Like, would have had a chain if... Uh, it's KO'd! Like, Oh my god, yeah, like if it was a push, sorry, if it was a push he had to chain, because obviously you couldn't push him to that square if he was still standing, could you? That would be suicide. Yeah. 
And now he has to go and stand next to the tackler. The tackler's going to get three dice. He could go, yeah, no, if he goes up in front, one, two, three, yeah. four, five, so yeah, he has to go in front of the tackler, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah really nice. Really nice. Yeah, no, That's not that. good enough, is it? You can just walk it in. Around that. Yeah, <laughs> and he's like, cheers, don't have to roll the dice now. <laughs> yep. Walks it in 100%. Go. Did the rat ogre wake up? The rat ogre is there. Oh, he I woke up. Got to run it. Is apothecary. So this is fine for Moomin Slayer. <laughs> it's ridiculous. <players>. It's ridiculous. <laughs> he's, he's had. It's oh what? The world overpowered. <laughs> they might be a little bit overpowered. Yeah. <laughs> No guard. I don't know really how, how he's going to try and stop this. Mm. I, I think because he just sidesteps around you. I think you offset mm. it and then you make it in columns and just say, "There you go, solve that." Are we? Are we? Are we, are we thinking, fellas? The one turn is on here. Yes. Very. Heavy yeah. Okay. All right, Very heavily. All right, all right. Yeah. The. Uh, he could even. He could even use uh, fills and the goblin to do it if he goes there so we might have to backline it it looks like he might be thinking about that and backlining <laughs> <coughs> the sidestep makes it so much easier the, the backlining is not terrible is it because it's 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 three three uh well you can make it four three two if you do it properly yeah well, yeah. he hasn't got. You know, he's got the players. He's just got eleven, hasn't he? Yeah, he's got enough players. Four three. So it's four three two. Yeah. Yeah. Well, do, I, do I have a, a, a quick second to to reset the scene for from watching at home? Any new viewers as well? Sure. All right, here we go. You guys at home. We are currently in the middle of our lower bracket, lower bracket round three here. Moomin Slayer versus Anarion. The one turn is potentially on. Uh, here to swear things up to go into overtime. After this, we then have ourselves Caltroop versus Crystal Hunter, which will round out exactly who's going through to the next weekend. It's top six players who have qualified for grand finals next weekend. Well, we're going to be in a studio, boys. We're going to be in a studio. Uh, I can't wait for that one. And for you guys at home as well, it's all coming your way here on the official broadcast on the Nacon Twitch channel. So do you want to set the scene in case there were anyone brand new just joined us there? But uh, I'm excited for this, fellas. Oh yeah, it, it's very on and yeah, super excited for next weekend. That's going to be incredible. And this is going to be amazing. Jimmy, can you scroll up a little bit? How's he set the back line? Is there a gap for the gutter and it's a potentially... Yeah, I mean, from to blitz through. He's three, just three, two. Yeah, three, three, two, dude. So he could potentially like block with the roger, right, to give himself second chances, but surely he just he just blitzes it, fills, blitzes in, and and gets two gets two pushes easily. I mean, this is this super easy. I don't think you even blitz with a roger, honestly. Like you, you can have the roger as a secondary option. Yep. Yeah, pop the middle one out of the way, fill in the square in front of the wrestle um, to the top left of the gut, uh, to the rat ogre, and then you can just. Oh my god, this is his setup. Oh dear. What? Oh dear god. <laughs> oh he's got the snot he's got the snotling, he's gonna put the snotling in there. He can't, he can't they can't swarm on oh. that square. Oh. Oh dear. So this is lack of experience with Underworld, right? This this is what well, this is the thing. This is lack of experience with Underworld here. Oh no. <laughs> he, he could have just put the snotling in here and then blitzed into instant sidestep and and then he could have put blocked over here and stuff like this was yep. just this was just so Ooh. easy i mean it was so easy and he has he huh? has relied on this the game the game doesn't let you not dodge no it doesn't oh the game doesn't let you not dodge oh no <laughs> do you want to dodge no definitely not no way N negative oh, on the dodging oh man 
Owen oh, Aaron is not going to be happy. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's going to oh, actually boy. cost him money potentially. Yeah. Oh yeah, no. Yeah, and is not going to be happy at all. Ideally, you want to fill these two squares, but he, he should have moved those two first, right, into mm. those squares when they weren't based. And and then he, he could have filled in, refilled those in with the snotlings. So he could have got an extra push out of this. But uh, potentially, but now it's not easy at all. He's got the minimum. Yeah. Oh, right, so he's in. What's the throw? It's a good question. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Probably he's a three plus. No, maybe he's a four plus. Four. Oh, oh, he passed it to him on a two because he's got the re rolls. Oh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure that was correct because you want your re rolls to like <gasps> you know overtime, right? You're losing one nil. Oh man, so no re rolls left. Three, three, two. So it's it's sixty six percent now. Oh. He gets it. <laughs> he gets it. He makes the one turn. Flip me, guys. Goes to overtime, but Moomin Slayer is out of rerolls completely. Narin only has one. And Narin's won the toss. I I think if the toss went the other way, that was game over. I don't know. I don't know. That's that's a that's a big call. Honestly, anything can happen. That he's out of rerolls. It's it's not golden goal. I mean, if it was golden goal, I'd agree because he just bang it in with a gutter yeah. again. But, but with this being a whole half, I could see you know either player scoring. Yeah, I think this is still pretty close to fifty fifty. I think it would have been close to fifty. I mean, yeah, okay. It would it move and say would be more uh, favoured than yes, Arian move, move if he won the toss. Yeah, but I don't think it would have been a, you know a done deal if he if he'd won. No re-rolls, I guess, the safety net. The variance comes in. A lot of variance, yeah. Oh, wow, somebody's oh, been no. sent off. Or oh, stunned. Troll. Stunned troll. Did he lose his guy in the backfield? Because I got a guy stunned and sent off. Uh, just just the one stunned. What's it? Oh, and under the flag, we've got the ball carrier. Yeah. Still 11 players for an Arian. Uh, 12. In overtime, he's still got 12 players moving Slayer. <laughs> it's pretty outrageous. Oh. Luckily, it wasn't one of the tackle guys. There's only one tackle guy left now, so the tackle guy, I should say. <laughs> it's 11 versus it's 11. Yep. Yeah. Just a snotling, but it's it's a big cast, isn't it? They all count. I'd, lo I'd love to see an Aryan go and cover the ball a bit here, because... <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I don't know what you're talking about. Good runners are only movement 9 and agility 2+. plus. <laughs> There's no danger. <laughs> yeah, he probably should have done some safe moves first. Yeah, this is good. Th this is right. Here we go. And you're going to blitz with the tackle into the snotling and just hope you don't. There is a things. very, very strong argument, though, of these two being one square forward, right? Because of the bobble box. Yep. yep. So that even if you fail the pick up, it's still covered. Yep. So, yeah, I think it would have technically been better for them to be one square forward. So, what, what Jimmy's talking about there is if the guy that goes and picks the ball up fails the ball automatically scatter one square around from where that player is at the moment it could bobble onto that red guy there who then could fail it and it could go forwards if you take that out and effectively put an air gap in it can't possibly bobble two squares forwards yep but he makes the pickup again he's honestly this whole tournament in Arian has rolled great on pickups hasn't he? he's been in the rain twice versus like skaven i think both times he was in it was in the rain versus skaven and i mean they're just Brutal pickups, aren't they? If you fail them, you you toast. So he's uh, he's done well on the rolling those pickups with no show sure hands. Obviously, no hint of show sure hands on this team. <laughs> so trolls back up next turn, isn't it? Get to the troll. Yeah. Neither side using the 
uh, bribe yet. Interesting to see if he might stick a foul on the on the troll here, right? Yeah, I'd, I'd like to see. I mean, I don't know if you can get it in this turn, but yeah, I'd like to see it. That makes the sneaky get even more dangerous as well, doesn't it? Because it it now can just foul with, with basic impunity. Yeah, I wonder. I wonder if Movement Slayer might want to foul, but might not foul because that'll remind Inari, and then Inari <laughs> has a sneaky get and a bribe. <laughs> yeah. I've I've done that before. I've 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 fouled somebody, and then it's reminded them that they've got the bribe, and and then I've come out on the losing side of it. <laughs> Oak the bear. Doku says now if Anorian loses, it'd be really unfair. Unfair. Oh, I don't know about that. What's fair and what's not fair? You know, at the end of the day, who's to say who's you know who's had the best dice and who's to say who's played better or anything? You know, like there's a we don't have Blood Bowl stockfish, do we? So uh, <coughs> it's all uh, it's all a bit unknown. <laughs> it's not science, is it, Blood Bowl at all? And we really, all you have is what you think and. And that's about it, isn't it? Really, you know, what yeah. what would you do and and things like that. I mean, some things are technically correct on, like you know, go, turn sixteen, and you know, some save moves first, like you know, like these. This is all fine, right? He's moved away from the troll. He should have picked the troll up. But apart from all of this, this is totally fine. Yep. And I presume he's actually going to blitz with a free big uh, black orc into something. Oh. Mm -hmm. Oh. But he's left the troll down, yeah, and he could have just got that troll up. There was somebody next to him, wasn't there, at some yeah, point? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so... Maybe Narin's feeling it, you know, he's had... He was up really late last night playing about midnight for his time, and then he's had a, a torrid day with the, uh, you know, like, busy, busy day, and then trying to cram these games in to, like, his busy schedule, so, like... Uh, you know, maybe maybe he's mentally gone a bit. The you know that not being able to use dodge against the one turn. <laughs> well, sorry, having to use dodge against the one turn. It, maybe you know it's taken a mental toll as well, like the, grueling, grueling game and everything. Well, he literally got scored on because of it. So you could actually argue that if if I was in Orion right now, I I'd won this game. I had won this game. <laughs> Yeah, and then yeah, I yeah it's already cost him the game. I mean, he might win anyway, but yeah, it, it hasn't cost him the game yet, has it? Oh Oof. wow! Oof. But he's playing when he Oof. shouldn't be playing, at least. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's having to play, play again when he might not need it. Yeah, I mean, well, he did not need to, right? Like he, he, he could have taken the pow, and then I'm pretty sure Moomin Slayer. Oh, that was the first hit. It, it, it was yeah, couldn't do it. It was done. It was done. If if that had been a pow. Go and walk next to the troll. Ooh. Huge. Looking pretty safe now for Anarian, isn't it? Yeah. He's got to make the ball a little bit safe here because it's, it's, it's a snotling. Oh, it'll just yeah, get to the 3D, yeah. It gets the power. Okay, by snotling. <laughs> Kills him. <laughs> there we go. Fixed. Yep. Oh, oh god. <laughs> Camera's got in mind of its own again. Yeah. Uh, so that was a line rat getting KO'd by one of the corners of the cage. And then we've gonna see a snotling uh, sorry, a gut uh, a line rat with wrestle getting three diced with goblins. The only way this goes wrong now is if Anarian can't find the distance to get down the field. Or Oh my goodness, he might find it. Wow. Or, or if or if the gutter runner just charges in and says, um, five plus, two dice uphill? Sure. Oh, in fact, just five plus, one dice. I have to. That was a that was a turn from hell for Moomin Slayer. <laughs> just half his team removed. <laughs> and then the, the rogue is stunned. Like how on earth he like he can't mount a defense, can he? Up uphill? Three dice uphill, the the the, the black orc. There we go. Without a reroll, uh, it's over. Well, he's still got the one turn, hasn't he? Weirdly. So now <laughs> you just play for kicks. Actually, you just go, yeah, screw it. Play for kicks. Yeah. And now you, as an RN, you have to double GFI to hit this this gutter runner. Yep. And you so absolutely no nail follow it. here. Yeah. If you can, if you can nail it, you've won. 
Got to nail it. Yep, one GFI. I mean, he has to. He, ju he just literally has to, you know, make your make your make your ball, you know, safe in a cage up the field, and uh, and you've got the sneaky get there. You've got a goblin. Well, maybe he's running bother about the cage. Just <laughs> no, you have to. You have to cage up. Oh my god, another KO. <laughs> That, you have to that, cage and make it safe. It's the line of injuries and knock it. It's just wild. <laughs> Look at that. Yeah, it's been brutal. I mean, it's, just, it's mostly come in the last couple of turns as well, right? About like seven <laughs> removals in two turns. It's crazy. <laughs> and he's still uh, got seven time. players on the field. <laughs> yeah, he's still, he's, he's, still got, he's still got a few left, but uh, he's, got, he's got the biggest one left, right? Uh, this, this little guy here is the biggest player on the pitch. And... Uh, Narin's definitely going to want to foul him. Oh, he's not. not doing it. No way. Oh, so he's not going to foul him. He's just going to blitz him. He's no. not even going to blitz him. Okay, Kaz, this guy. <laughs> yeah, why not? Oh, I don't think he's recognised the problem. No. I mean, he's going to have what? Well, let's say all the KOs wake up. How many players would the Underworld have if all the KOs waked up? Woke up. Nine? <laughs> that's more than enough. Yeah, that's meant plenty. Wow. Right. So one of the coaches has spotted the problem. <laughs> Harsh and Anarin, if he doesn't go in and win this from here, equally, got to deal with that. You've got to deal with one of those two. You just take either of those out, you've probably fixed it. Yeah. Yeah, to be fair. Troll Blitz. Get the mighty blow on him. I think it's worth it. Oh, it hits a Snotling instead. I guess this is like, you know, just going pure numbers for the one turn. I don't think it's enough, though. It's. I don't. He's know got more them. turns, though. He's got more turns, and the roger can't escape. Right. Once the roger's engaged, the roger cannot save itself. So, so maybe the idea is, you know, lock down the roger, hope to kill a snotling, and then next turn kill the roger. Whereas if he didn't hit the snotling there, it could have just run away, and not get killed. Maybe that's the idea. Yeah, maybe. Droga can't throw no Sage. Hello, Sage, by the way. Are you coming back to Blood Bowl Sage or are you still um in, in Blood Bowl Exile? What what is Blood Bowl Exile? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it, it's it's I don't know, like not playing Blood Bowl, like forcibly from your own being forced. The salt mines, the salt mines of Moria. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we rolled a one on the uh, argue the call, and then got the reroll with bribery and corruption. So he, he wasn't sent off, and then he used the bribe finally to not get sent off. Now he runs away again. Yeah, so he does get a big hit on the uh, on the roger. Oh. <gasps> <laughs> well, you re-roll it. What else are you going to spend your re-roll on? Yeah, yeah, you have to. And now, now you get the gang file here, and this, this is going to help the one turn a, a decent amount. No more, more assist scenario, not less. <laughs> <laughs> more assists. <laughs> Kick his head in. He doesn't need to put more assists in. Oh, he does. Yeah, all the assists. He wants he all, want all the assists on That's this it. guy. Screw this. Screw this snotling over here. Get all the assists on the roger. <clears throat> Is he worried about um, snotlings running down the ball? Maybe. Doesn't get rid of him. One more chance to get rid of the roger. You can't be afraid of snotlings. <laughs> They're movement five. <laughs> There's no way they can reach. This could have been three more assists. 
It's really quite bizarre. Right, so it's now basically a straight injury roll. Basically. Third. Nope. Sent off. Fails the argue the call. That means he only has ten players to stop the one turn attempt. Uh, but, you know, there's going to be very, very few players. Three, four, seven on average-ish, which is enough, right? Seven, seven players is enough for the one turn. Probably less with sidestep, honestly. Well, let's talk to me here. What's the what's the one turn play? I mean, can, I mean, first and foremost, is, you know, I guess we have to see how many players come back into the to the mix here uh, now that it, things have been reset. Uh, Jimmy, what what can what can Women's Slayer possibly do here to to guarantee? Obviously, same position earlier on in this in this matchup here. I mean, what, 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 what's what's the play? Well, I think that the problem for Moomin' Slayer is Inarian's learned from his mistake right here, and he's not backlining anymore. Um, it's actually an incredibly easy one turn with sidestep. You only need about five players or something stupid. Like it, It's crazy yeah. how few players you need with sidestep. So um, he doesn't have actually any strength three players, so that does make him somewhat reliant on the Rat Ogre and getting filled with Snotlings and stuff. So that makes it a little bit trickier. But he, he does have the Rat Ogre, so he's got half a chance. It, it's going to be a little bit tricky. He's got to, he's got to make the right plays. I think his biggest problem here is going to be is going to be finding the players to do this because uh, it is it is a little bit tricky. Uh, oh, oh wow! Okay, so so the the okay yep yeah, okay Inarian spotted that. <laughs> Inarian <laughs> nearly lost it by having that guy on there. Having, having a player here was absolutely terrible. He could have been blitzed, pushed into here, pushed into there, sidestep up. So that was. That was a terrible, terrible position to have that black orc there. That was lucky that he spotted. Lucky that he spotted that just in time. I think backlining here is a mistake, though. I think this is just too easy with sidestep. Really too easy with sidestep. Like, incredibly easy. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I mean, talking about, I mean, underworld as well. If, if you're in the situation where you've got a, you've got to do it in one one turn. Are they one of the best factions to do this with because of that likes of that gutter runner? The absolute best, yes. The yeah, absolute yeah. best. Uh, th this gutter runner could have had uh, two heads, which he chose not to, but he could have done. And they've got the Juggernaut Rat Ogre. They've got they've got the most players, so it's less likely that the Rat Ogre is bad for you. Like if the, the Rat Ogre can kill your own players and stuff, and uh, they're the best team to absorb it, killing your own players. Mm -hmm. And you know they 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 have a thrower that they've they've lost, but the thrower could have uh, extra arms to. The, the, the Skaven Thrower can't have because it's a double for the Skaven Thrower. Um, it's well, not a double, a secondary skill for a for a uh, Skaven Thrower, but it's a primary skill for a Underworld Thrower. So they have undisputably the but the best one turn. And then that's not even mentioning the Snotlings that can two plus anywhere to fill gaps to make it easier. So this is an incredibly easy one turn. But once again, Moomin Slayer has set up incorrectly for it, and that may cost him. Yeah, and then, and everything rides on this. The, the, you have to make you have to make oh. this. This is this is in or out grand finals time. It is, yeah. And he's only got forty eight seconds. He's got that big time bank of six minutes. Oh no! And, he's... Oh my god! He's so wrong. He, he's just wrong. <laughs> I guess I, oh, he can he can stand oh, there to hand yeah. off. He's gonna he's gonna stand there to hand off. That was his plan. But flip me. <laughs> he, like he's already doing it wrong. I think before this, but at least this gives him a chance. Fails the catch. <sighs> wow. wow. <laughs> well, I said an Ari oh, was well, going to no. go through. Well, that's one fixed. <laughs> yeah. Anyone? The, it was Jimmy Neil? Well, we should keep a running count from now on. Honestly, <laughs> the, 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 tone in, the tone in Jimmy's voice said, and he's <coughs> rolled the one. And he was the, it was just like, and that's, and that's that. Uh, well, I mean, I mean, you know, we, we went to overtime and as we have done on many occasions before here, and uh, we've seen the, 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 you know, the one turns, they are, we've seen them witnessed it on the main broadcast here as well. They're absolutely doable. But if you don't set up correctly, Jimmy, that's one of the biggest difference makers come the end result. Yeah, 100% like that. The funny thing is I don't do many one turns myself. I tend to play teams that don't, you know, attempt them very much. But I think I like to think of myself as one of the best at doing them, even though I, you know, don't practice them as much. And maybe that's something I should do, right? Uber Blood Bowl. I should maybe be <laughs> practicing them more often. But, uh, you know, some of these are really honestly surprising, you know, 
these are pretty much the top the top 60 you know amongst the top definitely amongst the top 100 right none of these guys are outside the top 100 of these 56 who qualified and and honestly a lot of them have been lacking in the one turns and it's it's one of the reasons to take underworld you know your, your one turning has to be on point and you know if, if he's was maybe he's moving slayer you know saves his rerolls for the one turns and, and gets them both and wins yeah, I mean, I mean, Andy, we, we have to look at like the, the way this is going to affect next weekend as well. Of course, another player has qualified now for next weekend. That's five of the six for our grand finals. Um, how does that shake things up as well for the for the rest of the competition? I think it makes it very interesting to see what happens next. Um, uh, who's got who's Inarian going to get? Uh, I'm not not sure. We should probably look at that in a second. But <laughs> Inarian. I think, it's, I think it's good, good, good team. Like, well, no, it's not a good team. It's a terrible team, but it's great <laughs> against one type of matchup, and he's just being fed that matchup, so it, it, it's going really well for I, him. If my if my maths slash bracket knowledge serves me correctly, I think Anarian plays either Strider or Artemis in the next round. The loser of that. I think he wants to play. Probably wants on that evidence. He wants to play Art. I would think. <laughs> Maybe, <laughs> maybe. I mean, well, he, I think he could be either. Honestly, I think we have we seen him beat lizard men. I, I can't remember if he's played lizard men before with this team. I think we did. I think he just beat up lizard men. I think he just literally beat up lizard men. Just fouled them because he's got two more players, and I think he just fouled them out and won. I, I think I, mean, I can't be certain, but we've definitely certainly just seen him see. We've just seen him beat underworld, right? So he's got pedigree for that. <laughs> yeah, certainly has. Certainly has. And Art doesn't have the one turning capabilities that uh, Mimin just has. So, if if Art can, if he can control Art's Rat Ogre, that's suddenly a big chunk of the damage output gone. Could Inarian win this? Right? What about that? Oh that's, my that, god! That, that's my prediction now that Arnarian could potentially go on and win this. And if not, I think Chunter's going to win it. Wow! Are you, are you are you locking? You're locking in that that, that prediction. Yeah. That, that's your locked in. That's my top two. Yep. Anarian wow. Chant. Chat, you agree? You agree? Or would you side with Jimmy, who's got about 3% correct this weekend when it comes to predictions? <laughs> uh, <so. laughs> um, uh, actually, we'll, take, we'll take a look at the brackets in a second as well, guys, and get you up to speed and exactly how things lie. Because this weekend, that we've had action uh, th thus far, we've only got one more game left to play here in our loser bracket. Uh, we have Anarion going through to next weekend. Congratulations, GG's buddy, going to Anarion there into round four of the lower bracket. But that last matchup of the day uh, will be Cal Troop versus Crystal Hunter. I mean, you said it there, Andy. You think Chunter's going to be the one to, to go through. Um, what is it that you that you think is so special that, that, that you know, it will, will have the better of Cal Troop in this next round? Well, I've actually picked Cal Troop for the round, but if, if Chunter can get past him, then... What that's what that's demonstrating is that Chunter can play through bad matchups and still win. So, because humans, Skaven, I think it's his favourite for it, for the humans here. I'd like to that's, see Chunter get through. That's really great, Andy. Predict predict Coldrick <laughs> to win the match, but Crystal Hunter <laughs> to win the tournament. <laughs> It's exactly my, my thoughts exactly. Uh, this is the winner's bracket as well. To catch you guys up once again, uh, in case you have just seen this for the first time, this is the winner bracket right now and how things stand. Uh, those players who managed to go through uh, to the winner bracket um, in the top half of the table there, you can see Hiru, uh, Diomed, Strider and Artemis there as well. I mean, what the difference this makes as well, obviously going through the winner's bracket, having lesser games, going through to the finals, um, that'll favour, I presume, the players here as opposed to playing a lot of different matches or... Is there any in any in any way, shape, or form is playing more matches and having to go against the grind against some of the top tier players as they have done to get there? Is that beneficial in any way, Jimmy, to, to go through the lower bracket to kind of have those experiences before the grand finals? Uh, some people might say yes. You know, some people say it's all about adversity and overcoming adversity, and you know, the more bad situations you you battle through, the better. But um, there, there was a big tournament that, you know, that uh, Gadena courted a lot, Blitz Pit. I was the person who won that with the least adversity. I got, I got a buy in the first round. <laughs> and, and that made it so much easier, you know, playing playing less games. It's really hard to play loads of games of Blood Bowl in a row. And, and me just having that one little break of one less game, I thought is why I won that time. So I would definitely favor the, the winner's bracket guys here playing less games over the, over the weekend. And for me, it's Diomed and Artemis out of those two. I think they've got like the better racial matchup in the in the winners bracket there, and then obviously they haven't got a loss yet. So we, even if they lose, they can still lose. You know, they've still got another chance. Whereas 
uh, Crystal Hunter and Inari, and they're at the Last Chance Saloon already, aren't they? Certainly are. Certainly are, mate. Now, for you guys as well, um, what we're going to do here very shortly is take another very quick break before that very last match this weekend on our spectacular Sunday here. Uh, we'll be back very, very soon here on Blood Bowl 3 uh, Season Finals. Do not go anywhere. It's a real short one this time around. But we'll see you in just a few for the last matchup. You do not want to miss it. Don't go anywhere. Come into the loop. Then come straight back. There's lots more to watch on the See you in a second.